Hi, and welcome to Newton's Method. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doña Ana Community College. This lecture is for Math 1411, Calculus at UTEP. Chapter 3, Applications of Differentiation, comes to us from Larson's 11th edition of Calculus Text. Section 3.8, Newton's Method. Newton's method for approximating the zeros of a function. So what is this? Let f of c equal 0, so c is a zero of the function, where f is differentiable on an open interval containing c. Then, to approximate c, so if you want to approximate the zero of the function, we're going to use these following steps. First of all, guess. Guess a value that's close. And a graph is helpful sometimes for finding these, quote, close values, but I'll show you that in some examples we'll see here in a minute. Now we're going to determine a new approximation. So our next x value, all right, plus 1, so iterations, my next x value is the current x value minus the ratio of the function at the current x value divided by the derivative at the current x value. Now if you get two successive entries that are within a desired accuracy, maybe you want to be within uh, 1 1,000th, so if you have two values that agree up to the three decimal places, Take that as your final approximation. If this doesn't work for you, then return and make the new approximation. These are called iterations. An iteration is just successive applications. Keep doing it. And this is the same process your graphing calculator uses, which of course, here at UTEP, we don't allow graphing calculators in Cal 1. Hint, hint, my online students. Uh, when it asks to find a zero. So it uses Newton's method. It just does it a lot quicker than you. But trust me, you can do it the same as your calculator does. So let's complete two iterations of Newton's method for the function using the given initial guess. So if f of x is x cubed minus 3, then, and with x1 equal 1.4, so we're going to say, ah, 1.4. 1.4 cubed, that's pretty close to 3. So we're going to find our derivative, f prime of x is 3x squared. Now, for our initial guess of 1.4, our next value, x2, will be 1.4 minus the function evaluated at 1.4 divided by the slope at 1.4. So I'll put 1.4 in everywhere I see an x, and if I'm using a calculator for this, of course not a graphing calculator, I would put parentheses around both my numerator and denominator so that my calculator knows exactly what it is I want it to do. If you don't use those parentheses, you will get a wrong value. It'll be incorrect because your calculator will take you at your word, and your word will be a lie. Now, enter, entering this into your calculator, you'll output 1.4435. This is my x2. 1.4, 1 1.4435, I'm getting more exact. My second iteration for x3, I take 1.4435 minus the function evaluated there divided by the derivative evaluated there. Again, for the calculator, I'm going to put in parentheses around the entire numerator, entire denominator, and I see that this output, 1.4423. So these are accurate to two decimal places. I could keep going if I wanted more accuracy. However, it just says complete two iterations. That's how we're going to get started. Again, completing two iterations, we have our wrap-up. x1 equals 1.4. x2 is 1.4435. x3 is 1.4423. We, we see that both x2 and x3 are accurate to two decimal places. So our answer would be 1.44. In our second example, let's use a trig function. f of x is tangent of x, and my initial guess is given to me as 0 0.1. First, let's find the derivative. And we know, first of all, we know that there's a 0 of tangent at x equals 0. I know this because I know that tangent is sine over cosine. And I know the zeros of tangent will be the zeros of the numerator, so the zeros of sine will give me the zeros of tangent. And I know that sine has a 0 at x equals 0. But suppose we didn't know that. Suppose our initial guess, x1, is 0.1. We're going to find the derivative. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of x. And I, for my first iteration, x2 is 0 0.1 minus the function evaluated at 0.1 divided by the derivative evaluated at 0.1, which is tangent of 0.1 divided by secant squared of 0.1. If you are using a calculator 
which I highly recommend. I encourage you to make sure you're in radian mode. These are radians, real numbers. We're not talking degrees here. So make sure you're in radian mode as you evaluate these. And I end up with an output of 0 0.0006653. This is my new input. My new input into tangent, into secant squared. Yes, there is no secant squared button, but remember, uh, secant squared in the denominator will be a cosine squared in the numerator. I could probably do some simplification there. It looks like it'll be uh, sine cosine. What's going on if you're using a calculator? When I enter this value, I end up with 0 0.0000000019673. I'm thinking we got to our answer of tangent of x has a zero at zero pretty quickly. I and mean, that's, that's pretty accurate. That's about your chances of winning the, the jackpot in the lottery, too. I'm just saying. Now, what if we're not given an initial guess? We're going to approximate the zero or zeros of the function using Newton's method and continue the process until two successive approximations differ by less than one one thousandth. Here we go. If f of x is x to the fifth plus x minus one, here's a little graphing calculator output of what that graph looks like. It looks like x equals one is pretty close to the zero. The derivative is five x to the fourth plus one. There's a zero just below one, so let's start there. Let's let x one be one. X two will be one minus f of one over f prime of one. F of one, that's one plus one minus one, which is one. F prime of one is five plus one, which makes six. six. One minus one sixth is five sixths. Feel free to use five sixths. But remember, we want to get within a decimal accuracy, so I'm also going to use the decimal approximation. Using our exact value of five sixths, I'm going to substitute five sixths minus the function evaluated at five sixths divided by the derivative at five sixths. Gives me this fraction which I find my decimal approximation. Using that decimal approximation, because I'm no longer going to be inputting some kind of crazy fractions in here, and I use the full value on the calculator. I don't actually just round it, stop it here at the 3, 8. I use the full value on the calculator to make my uh, successive iterations more exact. 0 0.75502, the next one 0 0.754, so it's still changing. Uh, x to the 6, 0.754, oh look, that's 0.7548s, 7s, 7s, sevens. that's got some good accuracy. These two are really close to each other. And since these two are at least within a, a, mm, tens, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, they're within ten thousandths of each other, they're definitely within one thousandth of each other, we're going to accept x to the sixth as our solution. So if I was approximating this uh, zero of x to the fifth plus x minus one, I'd say it's at about 0.755. I would round to the third decimal place. Let's do it again. Approximate the zeros of the function using Newton's method and continue the process until two successive approximations differ by the less than 0 0.001. Here's my graph, x minus 2 square root of x plus 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like there's a 0 near 5. I can find my derivative. Derivative of x is 1. The derivative, remember we'll use the chain rule here. I'll leave the minus 2 out in front. The derivative of the square root is 1 half. Leave the inside alone. Subtract 1 from the exponent multiply by the derivative of the inside. But this minus two and the one half, they're gonna cancel out a little bit. I still have my negative, I still have my one, and in the denominator, I'll have the square root of x plus one. Zero near five, so I'm going to evaluate the function at five, the derivative at five, and take five minus that value. I'll get 4.829. But it's not just 4.829, it is all of these decimals as well, and I use everything. I take everything the calculator will hold and I put it in for my next iteration. And when I do my uh, difference involving a quotient here, I get 4828. So they're still kind of close, 
but that third decimal place is not right yet. X to the fourth, 4.828. 4271471 and I subtract the ratio of the function evaluated there divided by the derivative evaluated there and I end up with 4.828427 one oh look right back here this is where they differ that's definitely going to take up three decimal places so I'm pretty good with that so we can see these last two they're actually similar to seven decimal places uh, we'll take x to the fourth as our approximation of the zero of the given function, which means if you put this value, 4.828427124.75, in for x, your output should be super close to zero, like 0. 0.000 something. We should be very close to zero. Uh, that's it for Newton's method. Over and over and over again. Thanks for listening.